Hello and welcome to the OpenSAP course Building Apps with the Abapress Full Application Programming Model, Week 2, Unit 7, Implementing Basic Authorizations. My name is Karin Chutojomo and I am a Product Manager for the Aba platform. In the previous unit, we have created the OData service and previewed our SAP Fury Elements Travel List Report app in the ABAP development, development tools. In this unit, we will implement a basic authorization for data access using CDS rules for the travel business object. The areas we are going to work on in this unit are highlighted in the wrap development flow. This time, we will create an authorization object and CDS rules for the travel entity. Then we will verify the effect of the authorization check in the travel app. As already mentioned in week one, AMAP CDS provides a data control language, in short DCL, for defining authorization access to the data using a CDS rule. The classical authorization approach used on the ABAP platform requires explicit coded authority check on the selected data, which is stored in internal tables on the application layer. CDS DCL, instead, offers a declarative approach based on implicit authorization checks that occur during access attempts to the CDS entity. CDS role can be defined using PFCG conditions, literal conditions, user conditions, and inheritance conditions. They have to be explicitly defined for each CDS entity where required. They are part of the data model and therefore are also pushed down to the database so that only the authorized data is returned when reading a CDS data model. CDS roles are defined once and automatically used everywhere when accessing the CDS entity. At the end of this unit, we will have defined an authorization object and two CDS roles for the travel entity, one at the data modeling layer and another one at the business services provisioning layer for the data model projection. The CDS role at the data modeling layer will be defined with literal and PFCG conditions and we will create an authorization object for the purpose. Finally, the second CDS role will inherit the condition of the underlying layer. Let's go back into the system and implement the basic authorizations. Now we will define the access control for the travel entity. The access rules will consist of a literal condition for the view element currency code and a PFCG condition for the view element travel status. For the definition of the PFCG condition, we will create an authorization object, including authorization field and data element from scratch. Let's begin with the creation of the data element. For that, right click on the dictionary folder in the Project Explorer and choose new data element from the context menu. Enter a name and a description in the creation wizard and press next to continue. Assign a transport request and press Finish. The new data element appears in the appropriate editor. Domain should be selected in the category field. Enter the type name. Maintain the field's labels, for example, status for the short one and travel status for the rest. The maintenance of additional properties is not needed for the current scenario. Save and activate the new data element. Now let's create the authorization field. For that, right click on your package in the Project Explorer and select New or the ABAP repository objects from the context menu. Filter the entry in the appearing dialog, select authorization field from the list and press Next to continue. Enter a name in the creation wizard and press next. 
assign a transport request and press finish. The new authorization field appears in the editor. Maintain the name of the previously created data element and then save the new authorization field to activate it. Next, click on the link Create a new authorization object and assign the authorization field to it in the What's Next area below. Enter a name and a description in the Creation Wizard and press Next to continue. Assign a transport request and press Finish. The new authorization object appears in the appropriate editor. The previously created authorization field and the default activity field are listed in the authorization field area. Maintain the permitted activities in the appropriate area in the editor. Add or create, change, display and delete. Save the changes to activate it. The object class is maintained automatically. Now let's define the CDS role for the Travel BO view. Right click on it in the Project Explorer and select New Access Control from the context menu. Enter a name and a description and press Next to continue. The project, the package and the protected entity have been automatically assigned in the creation wizard. Assign the transport request and press Next. Various access control templates are provided for your convenience. Select the template Define Role with Simple Conditions from the list and press Finish. The created role appears in the appropriate editor. The annotation mapping role true is defined at the top to assign the CDS role to every user regardless of the client. The name of the protected CDS entity is specified after the grant select on statement and dummy literals and user access roles are defined in the where clause. Let's define a literal condition on the element currency code. Only records with the currency code Euro should be selected. Save the CDS role. Before we activate it, let us have a quick look at the current result set in the data preview. Just select the view in the Project Explorer and press F8. We can see records with US dollar as currency code and we can also check the number of selected entries. We can also have a look at the available currencies in the filter dialog. Now let's activate the role. Let's go back to the data preview and refresh it. Now only Euro records have been selected from the database. Let's go ahead and enhance the access rule with the PFCG condition to associate the view element travel status with the appropriate authorization field from the previously created authorization object and also restrict the access control check to users that have the value tree display in the activity field. Save and activate the CDS role. Now let's check the data preview again. Refresh it. No data is selected this time. The reason behind that 
is that my user doesn't have the required authorizations granted. But we will not handle the creation of authorization models in this course because of technical restriction on the ABAPT environment trial. Let's do a data preview in the travel app. The data is still retrieved. The reason behind this is that we have not yet defined access rules for the travel VO projection view, which is used for uh, in the service definition. As already explained, a CDS role must be explicitly defined for each CDS entity. There is no implicit inheritance of access rules. Therefore, let us now define the access rules for the travel BO projection view. Right-click on it in the Project Explorer and select New Access Control for, from the context menu. Enter a name and a description and press Next to continue. Project package and protected entity have been automatically assigned. This time around, select the template define role with inherited conditions and press finish. The created role appears in the editor. The annotation mapping true is defined at the top. The name of the protected CDS entity is specified after the grant select on statement. And in the where condition clause, we can define the CDS entity from which the conditions shall be inherited. It means there is no need here to rewrite the access rules. Enter the name of the underlying travel BO view. Save and activate the CDS role. Now we can again preview the data in ADT and test the travel app. No data is selected now. As already mentioned, we will not handle the creation of authorization models to grant a user the required authorizations in this course. Therefore, to recover the full access to the data, we can add a or true condition in the WHERE clause of the access control for the travel BO view as workaround. There is no need to make a change on the BO projection layer because the enhanced rule will be inherited. Save and activate the CDS role. Now we can again preview the data in ADT and in the travel app. That's it. That was it for the demo. We are now at the end of this unit. Let me do a short recap. In this unit, you have learned what the declarative authorization approach of the CDS data control language is and how to create CDS roles to control the access to data. Further information for this unit is available in the appendix of this presentation. We are now at the end of week two of the Open ACP course, Building Apps with the ABAP RESTful Application Programming Model. Thanks for listening and see you next week where we will be enabling the transactional behavior of our SAP Fiori Travel List Report app.